The astronomer Galileo Galilei observed in 1623 that the entire universe is written in the language of mathematics. Indeed, such musical notions as octaves, chords, scales and keys can all be understood logically using simple mathematics. But at what age should children first experience maths? I think you've got to start teaching children even pre-nursery age. You've got to expose them to numbers, you've got to expose them to equipment that's going to allow them to manipulate numbers and then it should be strong right from there on. And as students move on from those first building blocks, how do we keep students engaged with sometimes very alien concepts? As a teacher I feel very passionate about making sure that children are coming into my maths lessons and they're excited about them and they're engaged in them and, and that often means taking it out of the classroom, out of a textbook and bringing it to life. One lesson I taught where we tried to use maths in a real life context was a lesson where we told the children that the petrol was going to run out in Cambridge and we played them a very realistic video clip um, which explained to them about how the petrol was getting very low and by the end of the day there would be hardly anything left. And without prompting and without me saying this is a maths lesson or without giving them anything apart from that context, they made tally charts, they created bar charts, they got maps out and they measured distances to see where people lived, to see if people had gone the same routes home. And suddenly they were taking the skills that they had probably didn't even realise they were learning in some of our maths lessons and applying them to this context in a very real way. I think... There is a danger sometimes that we can go too far down that route and of course creativity should be at the forefront of our curriculum. But there's a real balance to be had because they do need to have those skills and there's no point in me explaining big dramatic concepts where they have a chance to apply all these reasoning and problem solving skills if actually they don't have the very basic understanding of number. These first crucial years of academic study of the subject can shape the rest of our lives as learners. It's really easy to be pigeonholed at a very young age into someone who's good at maths and someone who's good at English. And right now, if you said to me, who are your strong writers in the class, I can tell you. Who are your good mathematicians, I can tell you. But I don't want that to be something that they go off into secondary school thinking. That's really hard to avoid. And the transition into secondary education sees maths blossom into a subject that today is truly cross-curricular. We start in year seven doing very simple things, looking at the very simplest mathematical relationship, which is proportional. So we find a string stretches one centimetre with one newton, two centimetres with two newtons, and you can say, OK, we want the string to stretch five centimetres, and straight away the students will intuitively tell you that's five newtons. Every student who can count can do that sort of maths. As teachers, we need to be producing children who are confident and who believe that they can do maths, and the more we get maths embedded into other subjects and the more children can practice it and feel secure in their learning, then, then that's surely a good thing. The actual examples we might do in a physics exam wouldn't necessarily be exactly the same as real life, but the principles of being exact and getting the right answer are what really matter. So, for example, you wouldn't get into a, an aeroplane if the pilot has said, yeah, we've got roughly the right amount of fuel for this journey. You wouldn't want to drive over a bridge where the engineer has said, yeah, it'll probably take a lorry. It needs to have been done exactly, and that's what science is all about, is getting this idea that we can be exact, we can look at the numbers, we can get the right equation, and we can make a prediction, and that prediction will hold. And even a complicated university-level formula can be reduced to just adding and multiplying. Most of the maths in our everyday lives today is taken care of by complex machines. At the start of my time here, I would come up with a problem. I might teach a series of lessons on one skill, teaching some basic programming. But over time, I found that students, young children in general, have become very adept at using computer technology, tablets, the portable computers, the iPads, the iPhones. But in fact, if they want to go one step further and look at how they begin to pioneer that technology as they grow up, how do they create rather than just consume the technology that they're using, and it's really important that they have an understanding of what basis those models are made on. And as they journey into higher education, students will need to have mastered at least some mathematics. One of the things that I always wanted my students to do is to think of maths as problem solving. And if they know maths is a problem, you can go in, 
see what is there, search for a solution and get out, then they'll deal with life in a similar way. And in that sense, math is rich indeed. Whether you go to university or, or whether you go straight out into work, everybody's going to need to understand a, a mortgage deal or a credit card deal. Everybody is going to have to be able to work out whether they're being charged the right amount for food in a restaurant or work out your percentage discount in a sale. So financial literacy is hugely important. And not every student I teach is going to want to go on and do a degree in maths or a maths-related degree. And so for them, the, the great satisfaction is in getting things right, especially in getting things right that they previously thought they wouldn't be able to get right. There is a simple joy in solving problems. I think employers want people to be happy using numbers and to have a feel for numbers. To be able to, in a quick meeting or a sales pitch, to be able to quickly do a rough calculation and say, OK, if you use this this many times, this many places, it will give you this much. It may not have to be exact. You can go and be exact with a calculator and a spreadsheet in your own time. But you won't be able to, in real time, make a case for something without a feel for it. Our children should go to society appreciating maths on economic level because economy is very important, technology is very important. These depend on maths in my book, whether we talk about finances or we talk about accountancy or anything. If you don't have the basics of numeracy, you'll never be able to do these things. I don't think anyone's going to argue that making sure that children leave primary school with the basic knowledge of the four operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, of course that is vitally important and it's the building blocks for the rest of their education. But to me, apart from that, it's the skills really that are the most important thing. Society has always defended or excused people saying, I'm not very good at maths, I'm not very good at computers, it's not what I do in a way that they would never excuse people saying that they were illiterate or unable to read. Do I think you can get away without a solid mathematical knowledge? You can probably muddle by, but I think your life is poorer for it. Mm -hmm.